Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, I'm speaking with Hilary Ip, the founder and CEO of Minor Miners. I met Hilary back when she was 10 years old, when she pitched her idea of Minor Miners at a kids entrepreneur competition that I was a judge at. Fast forward five years, she has built up this amazing community of users on her app and is getting ready to launch her version two of the app. Let's hear her story. Well, hello everyone. Um, so today I'm super excited to have Hillary Ip here. She is a 15 year old founder and CEO of Minor Miners. And I'm excited to learn more about her journey. And um, so Hillary, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, so well, tell me a bit of a background of Minor Miners. So Minor Miners is a global kids platform for us to learn on an online platform exclusively for us in different groups to exchange about the things we're passionate about and things we want to learn from each other, whether it's math, languages, or anything under the sun. Awesome. Well, you're 15 year old, and I remember reading about your news like a couple of years ago already. So you're a veteran founder and CEO at 15 years old. Uh, what inspired you to start this app? I remember the first time I met you was when I was 10. And you were one of the judges on the panel of the competition, which I first started in. Yeah, fond memories. Yeah. I remember your pitch, actually. That was an eternity ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I was inspired to start by that competition. So a few days before the final pitch where I met you, I was at the Venture Forum, which was a startup event in its very first year. Mm -hmm. I was giving a pitch, and afterwards, a few people approached me and asked, told me that this is a pretty good idea. Why not actually do it? So a few days after the, the competition ended, I had a couple of meetings with, with some people, including my first mentor, and he really inspired me to go for it. Wow. So five years just flew by. And, you know, what was the first version? Like, can you tell me more? Like, you know, obviously right now you have users on your platform and it's been a couple of years since you launched it. How, what was the first version like? So the first version launched in 2017. I started in 2015, 16-ish. And it took a very long time to get to that process with a lot of testing, reaching out to people, paper prototypes that actually failed. And our first version was pretty much an MVP, a minimal viable product, for us to understand how users would engage and what really is the potential of the product. And we were quite surprised to see what happened. On that platform, we just had simple chat groups where kids could talk to each other through audio, text, photos and drawings and we saw kids from over 50 countries come together and truly connect and talk about issues that were important whether it was a coronavirus or just talking about exchanging things like how to make youtube videos or just having fun i was really inspired by what by what they were up to that's amazing so when you first started the idea was to connect kids to exchange language mm -hmm. and learn from each other and now it's kind of evolved into this social network and you know idea sharing platform what were some of the uh, can you share some uh, user stories that you find really interesting and fun i guess there were a few users that really stick out in my mind there's this one kid who's my age who teaches more than like 10 languages he is so impressive wow. he's also based here in hong kong he teaches languages from romanian all the way to vietnamese and even thai he's so cool there were also kids talking about the coronavirus, which is something that's definitely going on. And we saw kids talking about how to keep safe, like washing your hands, why it's important, why to wear a mask. And these are kids who are like six, seven years old. Wow. That's really impressive to me. And of course, all the kids who are on there talking about the things they're passionate about, whether it's, you know, just talking about school, their beliefs, it's it's awesome to watch. That's amazing. And you being one of, you know, one of them, right? Like you really like understand the users and really evolve with their use case on the app. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into like your journey with starting Minor Miners. You, you said you're inspired from the Venture Forum. And did you do any, like, did you create any other apps or websites before this? Before this, I didn't actually. I've I was digging through my old school files a few days ago, and I found the first pitch I did at the age of like nine, Okay. which was for a small school competition where we were asked to do a small pitch. I actually found my um, script for it, and it was weird, like seriously what weird. What was it about? Some 
strange contraption that was meant to be a luggage with wheels that you could control. Oh. I don't know why I came up with that, okay. but I found that. So you've always been like an idea machine, like you have all these wonderful ideas, and how is it like being a teenage entrepreneur? Quite honestly, it's just pursuing your own passion. A lot of my friends my age are pursuing their own passions in different ways, whether it's a friend who loves to act and trying to enter different productions, or a different friend who is getting extremely good at the violin. Mm -hmm. I think everyone is just pursuing their passions, and entrepreneurship is just one of mine. I like how you put it, and you know, sometimes when people talk about entrepreneurship, it just feels like this, you know, mystical thing that yes. people are like, oh my goodness, she's 15 and she's being an entrepreneur. You've been on for international stages, being invited by Jack Ma to, you know, give a speech at the Alibaba um, Jumpstarter events, and you know, share with us some interesting experience that you know, some of your favorites. I mean, I think my favorite one so far was, I can't classify a single favorite, but I had one a few months ago in Dubai, and that was just an awesome experience. I was speaking at an international, international women's forum in Dubai, and that was so cool because not only did I get to meet Theresa May, wow. but it was just nice to connect with people from all over the world, and that was obviously an entirely new setting, and that was just hands down awesome. That's amazing. So, are you currently, you know, managing this project on your own? You know, how do you walk me through your your day in life as a teenage entrepreneur? So, my day right now is fairly structured because stuck at home, you need to come up your own regime. I wake up about six ish. After taking the dog out, I wind up working for a while. Like this morning, I had a meeting with the developers to discuss version two, and from ten to four, I've got classes. Afterwards, mainly work and minor minus or homework, dinner, more work or reading than bed. Right now, currently we're managing it ourselves, but we're working with an outsourced agency to deal with our tech. Right, that's amazing. So you're you're living the CEO like schedule, waking up at six, you know, managing it, <laughs> managing the, the the schedule with time blocks. So it's really inspiring and. How has the company grown so far? You know, any user figures or numbers? So right now we've just wound down the first version. Our version two will be released in private beta fairly soon. And currently I can't give you any stats because we just tore it down like at the beginning of April mm -hmm. because we're transitioning the server and everything. But right before we closed the app, we had more than users from more than 50 countries wow. around the world, which was so cool. How did they discover the app? Like, did you, you know, like have some blog talk about, you know, like a lot, I know you generate a lot of PR as the founder. So our users find this in a few key ways. First of all, social media. We are becoming more active on social media because we recognize that, especially now, more people are looking for productive and fun ways to spend their free time. And the other key way people find us would also be through different press, mm -hmm. as well as word of mouth. Right. What inspires you? Like, who do you look up to? I guess I really look to look up to people like Sheryl Sandberg because of how much she's done for women in the tech community. There's a lot of feminist figures, but I look up to her in particular because I'm in that industry. And obviously, it's better to, to know someone who is closer to your daily experience. I also really like what she's done by setting up the She Means Business Foundation within Facebook, which creates different workshops for women in different countries, especially here in Hong Kong. And I've taken part in a few of those workshops. Absolutely. I really admire what she's been doing and also just, you know, being front and center in yes. like the international stage and being a leader and it's not easy for her as well. Uh, yeah. So what are some, you know, major challenges, you know, I guess that segue into this question as well, where, you know, as a teen entrepreneur, you know, managing so many different things, you know, what are some challenges that you face? I think the challenges I face aren't too dissimilar from any other entrepreneur. Obviously, there's a bunch of tech nightmares, like we need to get it launched, but there's all this chaos going on, especially with the coronavirus. Our developers are finding it difficult to get things on time. Yeah. And of course, that is a difficulty, but we still need to get things done. And that pretty, pretty much is, an, is the thing. We need to deal with investors. We still need to deal with tech. It's pretty much the same as anyone else. And I think one of the biggest uncertainties for me was 
not knowing exactly what to do when things are a bit tough. Like when we first launched, we had literally three users for a good few months. Myself, Alexis, my little brother, and this random kid who came across our app from America. Oh, wow. That was difficult because we were like, we're doing social media, we're talking to people, I'm pitching. There's no users. Gotta start somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> but it, that time was really uncertain because we didn't yeah. know exactly what to do, what was working and what wasn't. Yeah. And, you know, sec like... I'm curious to like hear more about you as a teenager, right? Like we see a lot of Hillary entrepreneur Hillary, right? Mm -hmm. On stage, on the news, you know, you you like reading and debates, right? So uh, tell me more about your your hobbies. Pretty much it, reading de and debates. What are some of your favorite books? My favorite books. Now that's a difficult one. If you ask any one of my friends, they'll tell you. No one can come across your favorite one book. Right. But these days, I absolutely love books by Terry Pratchett, mm -hmm. especially Small Gods. That was awesome. And I like reading books about politics, philosophy. Politics, I guess I'd recommend not one book in particular, but I've been reading more of J.S. Mill, John Stuart Mill, On Liberty. I especially like that because it's not too long, but it, but it means that you can get everything compact and to really understand the his viewpoint. I also enjoyed, I also really like history books. Um, if anyone's interested in Ancient Rome, SPQR by Mary Beard is amazing. Wow. I'm definitely feeling like, okay, I gotta like go back to my Kindle and like download some of these books. Like I also love books and I think the books that you read is pretty, pretty intense. Like it's not like a casual Sunday read. So and you are, uh, you know, what about school? You know, what are your favorite subjects at school? You know, how do you feel about school? You know, I feel like when I talk to, you know, like high achieving teenagers like yourself, like there's just polarizing opinion of school, right? Some of, like I've heard some of us, uh, some of the feedback saying, oh, well, you know, I don't really care. You know, I'm my own person. And, you know, some people are like, okay, I love, you know, the subjects. I love the, the act of going to school, you know, what do you feel about school so far? As a homeschooler, my view of school is a bit different because obviously it's more flexible and a little bit less conventional. But I guess my favorite subjects would definitely be history, Latin, and these days science. Cool. Do you want to share a bit about like the homeschooling experience? And sure. So I started homeschooling in 2017. Wow, it's been a long time. And I've been using a few key ways of homeschooling over the years. Mm -hmm. We started off with project-based learning, which was a lot of fun. But I found that it was a little bit too unconventional <laughs> for my taste because I still ultimately don't want to close any doors whether for higher learning. And then we started one year of online school, which was pretty much giving us work to do on our own without any teachers, and we submitted assignments. That was wow. awesome, but right now we're in a homeschool co-op, which I'm absolutely loving. There are about eight of us, we're all homeschoolers, and we go to a centre in Admiralty for us to learn together from teachers in a learning community. Amazing. So you're like, you have samples, different styles within homeschooling, yeah. and like, how do you feel about like homeschooling with your entrepreneurship journey? Like, how does that play off with each other? It's obviously very helpful because of homeschooling, you have this complete flexibility, which means that you can also be an extreme procrastinator, which isn't great. And obviously that plays into entrepreneurship because if you are your own boss, if you are setting the own, your own tasks and if you're driving the project, you still also need to sort out your time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one way homeschooling and entrepreneurship is very similar. Another thing I like about it is, again, the flexibility. Like, when I went to Dubai earlier this year, or go to, like, things here today, I need to obviously schedule in my school hours. I had to leave about 10 minutes early from classes to come here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, well, uh, definitely that, you know, I feel like for homeschooling and entrepreneurship, we just need to have a lot of discipline, right? Yes. To understand, like, okay, I am going to accomplish these couple of things today and how I'm going to make time for yes. it. And whereas, you know, traditional schooling is like, okay, here are the boxes. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you go to check them off. And, well, so you're 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what do you think of university? You know, do you want to go to university? 
I guess my thoughts about university are very clear. I don't want to go for just the sake of getting a degree because it seems quite sad to think of the place of higher learning as a destination or else you'll be ruined. If I go, I'd like to have a clear criteria. Is it A, a subject that I love? B, is this the best place I can learn that particular subject, not just because of the name? And C, what will I do with this? If I can meet all three with sufficient criteria for myself, then I'd be very willing and excited to go. Wow, I'm always just so impressed by like how clearly, clearly you've thought through things, you know, at this age. I'm not sure what I was thinking, like at 15 years old. But I attribute that to debating, actually. <laughs> That's right. Like you're very like three points format type of like. <laughs> I like that. So, and uh, you know, since the series is featuring you know mm -hmm. teens entrepreneurs and. You know, we really want to like bring out this message, you know, to more teenagers to like, you know, not necessarily to be an entrepreneur, but just like do something, you know, like for the community. You know, what are some tips or advice you have for, you know, fellow teens to uh, as an entrepreneur? As an entrepreneur, I'd say that if, to be an entrepreneur, you need to be a very specific kind of daring because you know that 90% will fail. Chances are minor minus will be an epic burn in about a few years or so. But I do it because I believe in the vision and that's something I like to work towards. Whether it works or not, I'll learn from it and move on. And I think that's a mindset that's very useful for pretty much anything. If there's something you're passionate about, something you truly like to do, just go out and try it. If it fails, try something else and learn from that experience. But the best thing to do is to just go for it. If not, you'll just regret it and think, what if? I love that. And especially, you know, I, I feel that way as, you know, someone who was born and raised in Asia that, you know, sometimes, you know, with schooling and with the Asian values, it's sometimes just so, you know, scary or like adverse against risk or failure. Yes. And I think being an entrepreneur is really like to unlearn these type of mindset and to think about, wow, you know, what is the worst thing that can happen, you know, when it comes to building something and something that you're you're you have conviction about that you know to to explore that and there's always things that we can learn from it yeah i'm a, naturally a very risk averse person so it's taken a lot of time to get more comfortable with the idea of failure like my mentor told me in my very first meeting with him he spent about 10 minutes explaining the concept of failure why that's something to be embraced and not something to be scared of it's taken a lot of time for that to completely sink in and for me to agree with that wholeheartedly. But I guess that's the process of being an entrepreneur, to unlearn certain habits and to embrace, you know, uncertainty to a degree. I love that. So, well, with that, um, Hillary, how do we follow you? You know, how do we follow your development and progress mm -hmm. with Minor Miners? Minor Miners is on Facebook, Instagram primarily. So follow us there or you can follow me at HillaryYYH on Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in today, Hillary, and so great to learn about your story, and I've definitely taken notes on a lot of things. Great to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, I'm super inspired by Hillary's vision and her tenacity to keep iterating on her product and growing a global community of kids using her app. How fascinating is it to create a community that you can be part of and to share different interests in? And also, I love that her app has expanded beyond exchanging languages, but also becoming a social network for kids to exchange ideas with each other. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!